everyone. This video is going to be a little bit longer and more technical. Probably it's going to talk about SEDNA, creation through dissection. And uh, thank you. Uh, whenever you tell me that you like my videos, I'm very happy. Uh, the problem is that most of my teaching is in hung Hungary, in Hungarian. So my Hungarian videos get like 400, 4,000, 6,000 uh, likes or uh, uh, views. Uh, and the English one is not really climbing anywhere simply because I'm not always located in London. I go there every month or every two months and I do have seminars there as well. Also with um, uh, the lodge, the astrological lodge, just the other day we had a karmic astrology uh, workshop, a full day workshop. And uh, at the same time, if you like my videos or if you like transcendental karmic astrology, please uh, uh, like my uh, well. Just put the uh, put whatever you want uh, in uh, uh, at the the chat box, and I will appreciate it. So let's take a look at Stadna creation through dissection. This is a very long uh, an ETNO and uh, ex, an extreme TNO with an orbital period of close to twelve thousand years. Now think about it. If uh, if you consider twelve thousand, it simply means that uh, if you divide. 12,000 by 12, so approximately it takes a thousand years uh, uh, to um, to go across one sign. It has a very orbit, a very elliptical uh, orbit, so it uh, takes sometimes a lot longer in one sign. At the moment, it is, it is close to the sun, and this is why uh, in these couple, couple of signs, the last couple of signs, it only it only took a thousand, a hundred years instead of a thousand. Uh, to go uh, across uh, the hall. Uh, Sedna is moving into Gemini. This is the final ingress on April 27 at 18.39 London, so in the evening. And this is the London chart. We are going to take a look at it in a minute. I just want you to understand what Sedna means. If you take a look at the uh, the uh, myth, um, it suggests incest betrayer, um, abuse within the family, all kinds of neglect as well, but at the same time, creation through dissection, <clears throat> because when uh, Sedna's father uh, cuts off her fingers and arms and, and uh, hands, uh, these become the sea mammals. So out of something horrible, something uh, hor horroristic, all of a sudden, there's a new creation. And this is often the case. So if we look back uh, in, uh, at the uh, last 8, 800, uh, 80, 80 years or so, and Sedna was in Taurus, in fact, uh, what we could see is two world wars, the atomic bomb, all kinds of mass destruction weapons. So, of course, Sedna disrupted uh, Taurus, anything that is linked to Taurus, uh, security, well-being, also financial stuff. Uh, Poor people became a lot poorer, rich pe people became a lot richer. The uh, top 1% owns uh, about 99% of the world uh, economy, which is ridiculous. People, uh, individuals have amassed in ridiculously huge uh, wealth and the rest of the people are just not getting anywhere. So th there are huge imbalances and also huge disruptions. So that's what Stebna uh, did, uh, but of course not Stebna, but that's what the time suggests. So uh, when it briefly went into uh, Gemini and then back into Taurus and back into Gemini, this is a two-year period, and it, it, it a couple of times it had a trine with Pluto first in at the very last uh, degree in the um, uh, Earth signs, Pluto in Capricorn, Stebna in Taurus, that, that was an anoretic Earth trine between the two and then in the at the very very beginning of uh, Gemini and uh, and Aquarius and there will be one more because Pluto is going back to Capricorn in a, in a little while for just a couple of weeks and then finally the final ingress uh, uh, Pluto's final ingress uh, uh, into um, Aquarius will occur sometime in October and that is when after October November it will make another trine with Sadna creation through dissection. 
And uh, this heralds a period when we will see intellectual dissection and creation through interact, intellectual dissection. And you already see this with AI, with chat GPT, uh, with art, all kinds of artificial intelligence usage. You can actually create whatever you want and, and present it as a piece of news or present it as a, as a truth. So we are this is really a post truth era when anything and everything can happen uh, um, and, and it's really scary but let me tell you that it is we the people who, who can actually govern this who can actually um, say that okay what are we going to do with this new energy but it's definitely here we can already see the signs so if you take a look at what's happening uh, in this particular chart, you can see that the Uranus-Jupiter uh, conjunction is still very potent. It's still there. Uh, the, the traffic jam in, in Aries is, is also there. Mercury turned direct and is uh, almost exactly conjunct the North Node. So you can actually consciously understand how you have to learn to fight for yourself and for what's you. Chiron is on the descendant with Aries. They are descending, and Venus is ready to move into it, her own sign. Uh, the Mars-Neptune conjunction is getting tighter. This is what I call the Grail Knight or the Don Quixote um, conjunction, depending on what you fight for. And Pluto is on the IC in the London chart, and uh, the, the two pairs of asteroids uh, actually are very, very still very tight. Uh, the two uh, independent feminine. Pallas Athena and Lilith are retrograding and uh, the Juno uh, trans-Pluto conjunction is separating now, doubly separating, because trans-Pluto is going backwards and Juno is going forwards. These are the two first ladies, the two uh, spouse archetypes. So that's the chart itself. Now, let's take a look at the aspects of Sedna. And I included here all the other planets or points, chart points that have any kind of aspect to Sedna. And then I selected the ones that are really only going to Sedna, but of course the rest are also there. So that for instance, there is a, um, uh, a Pluto, trans-Pluto, Queen Kung, so, uh, or a Pluto, uh, North Node, uh, South Node, uh, North Node, uh, Quintile and uh, Trident side. So everything is there, but we are going to take a look at uh, the aspects of Sedna because this is a space-time moment that really sets off the new era for Sedna where the creation through dissection can occur in, intellect, in an intellectual sign. Uh, so we can actually rearrange the truth, rearrange knowledge, um, um, we can create new knowledge by throwing out what is not relevant and then say, okay, this is what we are going to do. And in this era, I'm just really hoping that we can recreate knowledge and and uh, and science in a way that it is really scientific. Because what you see uh, according to the label of science is nonsense at the moment, really nonsense. To me, it was absolutely staggering to see how in the European Parliament, People were not aware what the percentage of hydro hydrocarbon in the air is. They thought it is like 5% or 7%. And it's in fact 0 0.03. And when it goes down to 0 0.02, the, the trees are going to die. So we are going to be extinct, not because of climate change, but because of, we are stupid enough not to feed uh, the plants with enough uh, you know, carbon dioxide. Uh, let me tell you that the, the our planet was never greener ever greener uh maybe the, when the uh, the last uh, big volcanic uh, eruptions occurred that was the uh, the greenest but at the moment in the last 50 years this is the greenest planet we have because of carbohydrate so it's it's really it's really unbelievably stupid what uh, what they do uh in the uh, in the wake of of uh, or in the name of science really Okay, so, and that's exactly what's happening here, because as you can see, Mercury, which will be ruling Sedna for the next couple of decades, is making a semi-sextile, uh, semi-square, sorry, but it's a sextile energy. So it's a semi-square to Mercury, but in a, in a sextile energy, because Mercury is still in Aries, and Sedna is already in Gemini. There are two dissociate sextiles with Mars and Neptune, and this is a square energy because they are in Pisces, 
and then is already in in, uh, in Gemini. So this is a sextile, two sextiles that have a, 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 a square energy. The, the Pluto trine is, is perfect and it's going to be perf even more perfect once the Pluto goes backwards. And actually, I think there are going to be two more trines with Pluto and Sedna. Now that I come to think of it, once when Pluto is retrograding and then once when it's coming direct again into uh, into um, Aquarius, the final ingress will be in October. And then uh, you have a, a bit wide square, with, but uh, they are doubly uh, applying with trans Pluto. Also, there is a semi sesqui quadrate to the nodes. So actually, this is a tense dissolution of the opposition. Uh, and the Sedna south node is in air signs. So it's, it works as a, a, a dynamic trine, really. And uh, as I said, the, um, the, the sem, uh, semi sextile, semi square is a sextile energy. Why am I using semi? Whatever. And then we have three interesting, tiny little aspects. Uh, Sedna uh, makes a nobile to Chiron, self sacrifice, altruism, uh, a septile with. Um, with um, Astrea, karma breaker, and the septile is mysticism, and a decile, a 36 degree uh, prof professionalism with Aries. Interestingly, the two TNO, Sedna and Aries, are going to be in a 36 degree angle throughout the whole year. And that is something interesting. Okay, there's a non closing planetary picture, quite complex. Uh, as you can see, there is a the dissolved opposition. Actually, this is a doubly dissolved opposition uh, with uh, the nodes and Sedna and uh, with Pluto, because Pluto makes a quintile to the Mercury's uh, north node conjunction. A quintile is ingeniousness and a tridestyle with the south node and the tridestyle denotes uh, altered states of consciousness, knowledge that is coming down to medita uh, through meditation, through clairvoyance, uh, through uh, mushroom uh, journeys, something like that. And there's a non-closing tense trapeze. This is, uh, we call this a, a, a trapeze, uh, as you can see, is a, it's really a platform, but it's not closing because the trans Pluto south node uh, is not making a semi sextile So it's not making the requirements of the semi sextile It's less than it uh, should be, a couple of degrees. Uh, but actually, uh, the tens the tension is there, and of course, there is a mutable air engine as well with Pluto, Sedna, and Trans Pluto. Although the Sedna Trans Pluto square is quite wide, but it is uh, applying, so that's why I, I accepted it. And here are the transcendental celestial objects on the Mercury North Node. Again and again. Uh, if you are here for the first time, I, I color code the celestial objects. The asteroids, which you know, the, uh, describe the uh, personal karmic level, are purple or magenta, and uh, the TNOs, SDOs, centaurs, all kinds of trans-Neptunians are blue, and the red are uh, the fixed stars, which are not a part of the solar system. They are higher dimension energies, whereas uh, the, these uh, centaurs, TNOs, trans-Neptunians are describing our karmic wounds. So Mercury, if you have every decay, you really decay. Uh, the uh, the wife who is down in the underworld and tries uh, his his uh, her husband tries to get her back. So it's diving down into the underworld in under order to understand our situation. We should go to the recesses of the collective underworld, and and even then we may not be um, successful. And Alpha uh, Alpha Andromeda is the second healing phase uh, of suicide victims. The first is Shreat beta um uh, persos and uh, and after us is, is where we learn free movement after this event so on the south node you have avicenna which is even sina's latin name even sina is a polymath in the, the 1001 nights of uh, the tales the persian or arabic tales uh, so it's a polymath someone if you want to understand what is happening, you need to go back to what you have learned and you need to be a poly polymath. On Pluto, you have Osiris, uh, which is uh, another under underlord. 
Annabelle Lord, and Altair, which is Alpha Aquila. Uh, the uh, constellation of Aquila is first and foremost linked to Zeus, uh, who is bringing up uh, Ganymede into uh, the, the Mount uh, Olympus to uh, make the, make him the cupbearer of uh, the gods. But it, it is also the word uh, that carries down or. or Orphos into the underworld for Eurydice. So it's quite interesting how this is all linked. But uh, in in the, for instance in Hungarian lore, the constellation Aquila is one of the shaman birds that is taking the shaman the titles up on uh, the higher levels. And on Sedna uh, itself, you have Hathor, the um, cow goddess of the Egyptians, Morsomnus, which is a TNO, death and Sleeping, which quite interestingly uh, suggests that the ancients already knew how deep sleep and death are, can be very, very similar. So this is where we, uh, we we go when we go out. Let's put it this way. And the Pleiades, which is the home of the creator goddess, it's a tiny, tiny constellation. It's the tiniest of the constellations uh, above uh, above the Taurus, the, the celestial bull. And this is the home of the creator goddess. So this, this is a very important position. And besides these, okay, we can have these minor aspects as well. Let's take a look at them. I already enumerated them for you, but it, I find it important that uh, Sedna creation through dissection, which is now creating a new era for us where we can really dissect and recreate things. And as, as I said, it's very, very much linked to chat GPT and AI and what you can create with it. And yes, you can create a ton of misinformation, but you can actually also create a lot of educational stuff with it. And uh, it is dissolved, this cardinal square, because uh, when we put in all these uh, with the minor aspects, all of a sudden we have a Chiron Australia cardinal square. Chiron is karmic wounds regarding uh, in Aries, it means war and uh, and violence and aggression, fire, blood, all kinds of things. Uh, and uh, uh, Australia is karma breaking, uh, the, the karma breaker, the destiny changer. So that's the moment when we can actually take a look at our war destiny because they are the, the European and American leaders are marching us into this third world war which is going to be horrible if it occurs uh, and i i have a feeling that um, hopefully hopefully it's not going to but i don't i can't tell you why i feel like this and of course there's uh, it, it is dissolved by this cardinal square is dissolved by saturn saturn astrea means that you can actually uh find the boundaries and within the boundaries you can break your old embedded karma and these minor aspects, again, Sedna uh, makes a septile uh, uh, to um, Astrea, uh, which is uh, mysticism. There's a Sedna Chiron uh, Novi, which is 40 degrees, which is uh, altruism or sacrifice. And the uh, the death sign, the 36 degrees between Sedna and Aries will remain within orb, and this is professionalism. So these are the aspects. And there are a couple of transcendental objects as well, showing another deeper layer for this whole. On Saturn, you have a uh, Putia, clairvoyance, and also um, um, the Oracle. She was the Oracle of the uh, of uh, the Apollo Temple in Delphi. Fortune, Fortune, of course. Circe, the sorceress. Uh, Ahernar, uh, which is Alpha Eridanus, and this is the the largest of the constellations in the sky. It is the celestial river that uh, starts off at the um, belt stars of Orion, so almost ar around the uh, celestial equator, and goes all the way down to the South Pole. And it represents the hero's journey, how the hero is leaving its equilibrium and sets off on a journey to understand to have a quest to understand life or to achieve something. And sure enough, at the very, very end is the, 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 this, the brightest star of the constellation represent the, 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 the gift that he's receiving at, uh, at the end of the journey. So that's, that's a very uh, prominent one. We never see it, unfortunately, because it's on the Southern Hemisphere. On Australia, you have Apollo as sun god, 
Ehetlus, which is a centaur that is describing the discrep discrepancy, the, the issues uh, between truth and reality. Your truth is your truth and almost never reality. It's funny how I can see this many, many times, how, for instance, people, coaches, psychiatrists, shrinks are putting forced memory into people or during those sessions when they, they let them speak and then all of a sudden they reinforce it. And, and finally, uh, when the person comes out of therapy, he, he's all self-righteous, but of course it's not the truth. And this occurs so many times in family. I have seen this dynamic in, throughout my work so many times. Okay. Uh, then, uh, so that's a heckless. Uh, your truth is not always reality. That's that's what you need to come to grips with. And then uh, Castor, which is Alpha Gemini, so the uh, uh, the, the uh, happy and uh, and and creative and successful uh, artist. And on Sedna, the three uh, that we already looked at. And here are celestial objects, other celestial objects at zero degrees. This is something that I very often do whenever a, a a slow moving object goes into a, a, another sign, ingresses a new sign and as it is at zero degrees, I take a look at the whole picture and to see what else crops up. And there's a number of things. Why did I put corn? It is a crown, sorry about it. So there's a crown. There's definitely a crown in this, which is a mystic rectangle and a, a harmonic triangle together. That's what we call a crown. And the crown jewel is Sedna. There's a mystic, recta a mystic rectangle between Nemesis, Shiva, or Shiva, Harmonia, and Borastisi. So there's an opposition between Nemesis, the uh, punisher of hubris, revolt against the gods, and Harmonia. So there, yes, we are at the moment when we are either playing hubris and we are going to be severely punished, or we are creating harmony. That's our choice. And Shiva, which is the, the destroyer, someone who... Uh, uh, creates through destruction, destroying things, and Boris is the uh, the, the um, monarch or the uh, actually the uh, um, the tyrant, the tyrant. That's what we have here with Sadna on top, and then there's also a cardinal uh, T square between Shiva, Boris is and chaos. Chaos just recently uh, moved into uh, uh, into. Um, Cancer, so it's at the apex, created chaos, this program chaos, this is what you see. There's also a fixed piece there uh, at the apex of which there's Haumea and Nemesis and, and the Harmonia oppositions create the base. So that is all at zero degrees. And we can even take this a little bit further and take a look at what celestial objects are at 29 degrees. As you can see, Neptune at the moment, by the way, I did this in serenu.com, it's a wonderful site. You can use it if, if you want to. And this is uh, Neptune, almost enretic. So it takes another uh, 10 degree, 10 minutes before it actually moves into uh, the, the enretic position. So it's at the end of its own sign. Asbolus, which is at 29 Gemini. Uh, Asbolus is the, uh, the centaur you may remember who is the clairvoyant, but he is getting ridiculed whenever he makes a mistake. More somnos, la, uh, uh, death and, and uh, sleep. Seto, which uh, is toxic emotions, uh, which is retrograde at the moment. So it's actually going backwards. So it will uh, go uh, leave the anoretic position. All anoretic positions mean that we are stuck you are unable to move forward. And when you're anoretic and retrograde, it means that I'm revisiting something that I, I I forgot to take care of, something like that. And Bacchus, which is a, an asteroid, you, you can see here what they are actually. Bacchus, again, altered states of consciousness, is very anoretic, but going backwards. Uh, this has an orbital period of only four months, uh, four years, sorry. So it will turn direct and then it will eventually move into uh, from Libra into Scorpio. And uh, Aram, which is the uh, under lord, under lord of the underworld in Vash mythology, is at the very, very, very end of uh, Capricorn. It will move into Aquarius and then join uh, Pluto. But at the moment, Pluto is over two degrees in in Aquarius, so the uh, the orb is too big because we only allow one degree uh, for TNOs. So this is a space time moment. Expect the world to change um, ideologically, 
also what we consider knowledge. Hopefully this will create a new era where we can't actually use post two, but this is the, the fear that I have that it, it that it may may just create a lot of um, misinformation and a lot of uh, uh, lying and cheating. But it's up to us. It's always up to us. Never accept what is said to you. Always research it. Try to find different opinions. Leave your own bubble. This is very important. Even if you are absolutely true that uh, you are right, don't be. Don't remain self righteous. Question. Uh, look at the, the answers. Look at other opinions. Try to uh, try to emb embrace other insights into the same thing, and you will be much wiser. Thank you for listening. Bye bye.